Well, good afternoon. It's uh, good to see everybody today as we have another 15 minutes of discipleship. I uh, hope you've had a, a good Wednesday. Um, I hope God has blessed you greatly, and I'm glad you can join us uh, as we do this once again today. Today I want us to look at the audience. Uh, we've looked at the what, uh, why, or when, uh, let's see, let me get the, the, the order correctly, the who, what, when, and where, uh, and then we looked at context, and today I want us to look at audience, uh, because the audience becomes important. Um, we need to understand, as we study God's Word, who is it for, and, and what was being conveyed to them. Um, if we skip that step and we start trying to make application uh, to today, uh, then we can be in error really quickly. Uh, so we have to do our very best to understand what the Bible's saying to who was who was who was there, who 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 the story was for, and that's what I want us to look at today. Um, so uh, of course today uh, our our uh, Bible study is entitled just uh, we're looking at the audience, uh, and of course our scripture continues to be Luke fifteen eleven through thirteen. But uh, let me pray for us, and as I when I'm done praying for us, we'll jump into this. Uh, this afternoon. Well, let's pray. Father, we love you, God. We thank you for another great day. And, and Lord, we pray you'll continue to watch over us, Lord, as we learn to study our Bibles together. Uh, Father, uh, just help us to, to take these, these basic ideas and to, to make them into something that can just have a, such a great impact on our life and our faith. And Lord, just watch over us. God, I pray that you'll continue to be with the health professionals, nurses and doctors who are working uh, around the clock, treating people with this coronavirus. I just pray that you'll watch over them, God. I pray for those who have uh, contracted the virus, those who are in, in situations where they can. Uh, Father, just watch over them, Father. I, I pray for all of us who are trying to be socially distant, who are you know trying to do what we can to to lessen the impact of the virus. Uh, just help us, Lord. It's hard, and uh, a lot goes on. And I just pray that you'll be with us, uh, build our church family. Uh, Lord, I, it's hard not gathering together and as great as live streaming and videos are, they'll never be a substitute for us being physically together. And Lord, I pray that in our time apart, that it would create just such a desire to be together. That we, we would yearn for that fellowship that we're missing at the moment. God, we love you. We thank you so much for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, let's jump into the Bible this morning and uh, this afternoon. And we'll go from there. Uh, as we look at our Bible, uh, we have our story. Um, and, and that we've read and of course our stories here the prodigal son is what we're focusing on uh, and so it tells us our, our who in regards to who is a part of the story that Jesus is telling uh, but what we, we really need to jump into and back up to see is we really need to understand who the audience is who is who is present when he's telling this story uh, and I want us to just look at that bit by bit this, this afternoon uh, the first thing uh, is we see that there are tax collectors there. Uh, so we know there are tax collectors there. So let's go to our document that we might be creating and let's type, let's, let's put tax collectors. All right. Uh, so we know there are tax collectors. Um, and, and I actually am going to change that a little bit. I'm going to make that like that. All right. So we know there are tax collectors. We'll go back to the Bible. Who else were there? Well, it tells us just generally there were sinners there. So let's put sinners. We got sinners there. All right. Okay. So, so we got that there are sinners there. We go back to the Bible, and it tells us they're coming to need to listen to him. Of course, so Jesus is there. Um, he's telling the story. Uh, but then let's continue. We see that both the Pharisees, they were there. Okay, so the Pharisees were there. So let's go and add that to our, our document. And we got our Pharisees. They were there. And then finally, we can look and see that the scribes were there. All right, the scribes were there. And so we want to add that to our list. Okay, now what we want to do is collect a little bit of information we have about them all. All right, so we know we got the tax collectors. So we go back, um, tax collectors and the sinners. Uh, we don't know a great thing. It doesn't give us detail here about them, but we know about them from from reading a little bit about scripture. They, uh, both of them, were in a sense in society. In society, they were considered somewhat of what you would call uh, outcast. Um, 
And so uh, we can put there that uh, they were outcast. Uh, they were considered bad. I mean, they were the people that came and took your money that you worked hard for. Uh, sinners in general, that's, that's, that just knocks them out as they were considered bad uh, and outcast also. Uh, so that kind of tells us, oops, I'm sorry, I didn't change over. That tells us a little bit about them um, and how they were. Uh, so that helps us to understand a little more about them both. <clears throat> and, and the Pharisees, and the Bible tells us a little more here about what the Pharisees were there doing. And that's, that's what we really want to see is it says the uh, Pharisees and the scribes, they grumbled, all right? And so we can, we can make note of that, uh, that they both began to grumble. Uh, they began to grumble. Okay, and so as they began to grumble, well, why did they grumble? Well, it tells us as we keep reading, it said, they said this, this man, this man receives sinners and he eats with them. And so they were grumbling about the company Jesus was keeping. Okay, so they were, they were grumbling about who Jesus was with. About who Jesus was with. Same thing about who Jesus was with. And so that gives us our audience of who Jesus is talking to. We've got uh, two groups of people that are considered bad, uh, considered outcasts. They're not who you want to be around. You know, they're not who you want to be, I'm sorry, associating yourselves with. Um, and then you've got the, those that are righteous in their own right. Uh, they don't like this. The Pharisees and the scribes are seeing Jesus eating with them, and, and they don't like it. And they're, they're, they're questioning, why is he eating with sinners? And so this does a, a really good job of helping us paint a picture of who the audience is. And when you start putting all this together, uh, when you start considering all these different aspects, um, you start talking about the, you know, all of the, the different things that have taken place. Um, the 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 who you know the, you know we know who they are who they the what the younger son left for dead uh, lost all of his father's wealth but then the father's willingness to receive him again and forgive him when we start considering these things and then start considering the audience then we begin to get a bigger picture of why Jesus is telling the story uh, as we continue on down. Uh, we look at context. That context, again, is that unconditional grace and forgiveness. Um, <clears throat> and so we can begin to see that uh, the tax collectors and sinners, they're the ones receiving that grace and forgiveness. They're, they're sitting and eating with Jesus. They're learning about him. Um, he's obviously, Jesus will forgive us of our sins. Um, and, and then we see the Pharisees and the scribes coming, and they're upset about this. They don't like the fact that uh, Jesus eating with those sinners. Uh, they don't. They don't like this idea of grace and forgiveness. Jesus keeping. Um, Jesus keeping, uh, or allowing them uh, into the spiritual fold, the spiritual group, you could say. And, uh, anyway, one of the things you can notice in this and begin to, to put the dots together is who is who in the story. Obviously, Jesus would be uh, the dad. Uh, and uh, he would represent the dad. Uh, the tax collectors and sinners would represent the younger son who you know, are not living like they should but didn't realize it and come back home. Uh, and then the Pharisees and scribes, they would represent the older brother who do not like the fact that the dad is now allowing those, that, that bad younger son, those sinners, back without any you know, expectations, without any any conditions and so we begin to build our context we begin to build the context and by having the audience an overall idea of what's happening here we we begin to kind of answer that questions and put all the the kind of dot and all the i's and t's where we can now make application back because see that's the thing to remember as we study god's word as we dig into god's word we shouldn't be just looking to gain knowledge that's good uh, to have a better understanding uh, just from a knowledge aspect about God's Word is great, but beyond just knowledge, we should be trying to come to a place 
where we can begin making application in our life. Uh, whether we're doing a Bible study for others or for ourselves, uh, our ultimate goal should be wanting to see God's Word change us. And that's why all these steps are, are so important and become so important. And so this kind of gives us to the point of understanding who our audience is. Um, and tomorrow we'll talk about our, uh, taking this idea of who the audience is and all of this. And now let's put feet to it and put application to it. Um, and, and, uh, and we'll have a better idea of now what does this mean for us? Uh, and how do I use this in my life? How could I use this if I was teaching this as a Bible study? Um, and, and what's interesting as we look at this, is each of these stories, again, that we've looked at, they each do the same thing. If you look at the, the lost coin, uh, one coin was lost, but it was valuable enough that she was willing to go and do all she could to find the coin. Okay, um, The woman, again, would represent Jesus. The silver coin that was lost would represent the lost people. The others would represent everyone else. That, that one coin had value. Um, if you keep looking back, uh, again, the lost sheep, the same thing. That one sheep was as important as the other 99 sheep. And so it was worth finding and it was uh, worth rejoicing over when that, that, that sheep was, was found. Just as the same as, you know, we should rejoice when someone gives their life to Jesus. So just uh, uh, another part of, of how this kind of works together. Um, so I hope that this is helpful again today. I hope that all, as all of this is put together, uh, it's something that is helpful to everyone. I hope God will bless you. I hope God will give you another great afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow. Again, if you need anything, please call the church office. Uh, let us know. We're praying for everyone, and we're here for everyone. God bless you. Have a great day.